So on this episode, I'm going to be talking about what's trending in Commander with the top 20 commanders over the past week, according to the results on EDH Rack. So with all that said, let's jump into it. So first off, at 20th place over the past week, Shielder of the Apocalypse has gotten a total of 220 decks to her name. A 4-5 Phyrexian Predator for 2 Black Black that is Death Touch. Whenever you draw a card, you gain 2 life. When an opponent draws a card, they lose 2 life. So this commander, of course, has the dichotomy of benefiting you for the same thing that hurts your opponents. Popular themes that work well this commander currently are Wheels with Forced Card Draw and Life Gain. Next up at number 19, we've got Cranko Mob Boss with two more decks than Shielded at 222 decks. An oldie but a goodie, Cranko is a 3 3 Goblin Warrior for two red red that has tap create X 1 1 red Goblin creature tokens for X the number of goblins you control. So Cranko can get out of hand quite quickly, essentially doubling up your goblins every single turn, or even more in some circumstances. So when it comes to themes for this commander, well, the most popular and the most likely you're going to see built around it are, well, goblins. Go figure. Moving up one spot to number 18, we've got another oldie but a goodie with Kali of the Vast at 254 decks to its name. A 2-2 Human Cleric with flying that costs one red, white, black, and says whenever it attacks an opponent, you may put an Angel, Demon, or Dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking that opponent. So, this commander can cheat out some massive threats, again, whether they are angels, demons, or dragons, and when it comes to themes built around this commander, well, typically you're going to see either a combination of those three types or a specific type among them. Speaking of dragons, next up at number 17, we've got Corvold Fey Cursed King, one of the most popular commanders for a long time since it came out in Throne of Eldraine. Over the past week, it's got 271 decks. It's a 4-4 Flying Dragon for 2 Black, Red, Green. It has when it enters the battlefield or attack, sacrifice another permanent, and whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one counter on Corvold and draw a card. This is an incredible value engine that can become absolutely massive in no time and draw you an absurd amount of cards. And typical builds around that you might see are going to be Sacrifice, Treasure, and Aristocrats. Next up, though, a Salt Tide Commander that has been very popular in its time with Muldrotha the Grave Tide at 273 decks over the past week. Muldrotha is a 6 6 elemental avatar for 3 black, green, blue, and says During each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. So, Muldrotha is a value centric commander, allowing you to replay cards out of your graveyard as long as they are permanents. So, in a way, your graveyard is an extension of your hand. Typical builds around Maldrotha that you might see might be Sacrifice, Mill, Pod, or Lance. Next up though, at number 15, we've got Yuriko the Tiger Shadow coming in with 293 decks over the past week. Yuriko is a 1-3 human ninja for 1 blue black that has Commander Ninjutsu for blue and a black, so essentially, you pay that cost, return an unblocked attacker back to your hand, and then this comes into play, tapped and attacking that player. And whenever a ninja you control deals combination to a player, reveal the top card of your library and put that card in your hand. Each opponent loses life, you'll let cards convert to mana cost. So this commander can get around commander attacks, provide you card advantage, and also drain your opponents quite quickly. Some themes for this commander are ninjas, ninjutsu, or top of library manipulation. Moving on though, at 14th place, coming at 295 decks over the past week, we've got Prosper Tome Bound. Prosper is a 1-4 Tiefling Warlock with Death Touch that costs 2 Black Red. It has the beginning of your end step eggs on the top card of your library, until the end of your next turn you may play that card. And whenever you play a card from Exile, create a treasure token. Prosper is an incredibly popular commander that can provide you temporary value in two ways, whether that's card advantage or with temporary man with treasure tokens. Decks built around it tend to focus on treasures, cascade, and impulse draw. Next up, though, at number 13, we've got a much older commander with Edgar Markov coming in with 303 dax over the past week. Edgar Markov is a 4-4 vampire knight for 3 red, white, black that has. Whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 black vampire creature token. 
It has first strike and haste and whenever it attacks, but a plus one counter on each vampire you control. So Eminence is incredibly powerful, essentially giving you a free effect throughout the game. This commander can easily build you a vampire army and pump them as well. So unsurprisingly, typically this commander is built with a vampire tribal theme. But now it's time for us to move on to number 12 with Ishin to Heaven says one with 305 decks to its name over the past week. Ishin is a 3-4 human samurai for red, white, black that has if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So Ishin is a Mardu attack harmonicon commander, essentially doubling up all of your attack triggers. Themes built around this commander typically focus on attack triggers, extra combats, and force combats. Next up though, at number 11, we've got Shorakai Genesis Engine with one more deck to its name than Ishin at 306 decks. It is an 8-8 Luxury Artifact vehicle that costs 2 white blue that has pay 1, tap, draw 2 cards, and discard a card. Create a 1-1 Colorless Pilot Creature Token with this Creature Crew's vehicles as though its power were 2 greater and it's got Crew 8. So Shorakai can provide you a lot of card advantage throughout the game and make you a bunch of pilots which can easily crew it so it can be a massive threat. Themes typically built around this commander are vehicles or artifacts. Moving on to number 10 though, we've got a brand new commander from the Warhammer 40k product with Magus Lucia Kane. It's a 1-1 human tyranid wizard that costs 1 green blue red that has the beginning of combat on your turn put a plus 1 counter on target creature. And tap add colors colors when you next cast a spell with X and its mana cost or activate ability with X and its activation cost this turn and copy that spell or ability may choose the targets for the copy. So typically players focus on that second part and double up on X spells and X abilities. For the most part when it comes to themes this commander is focused on with X spells or with plus plus one counter builds. Next up, yet another Warhammer 40k Precon Commander with Marnaeus Kalgar makes the top 10 at number 9 with 326 decks to its name over the past week. It's a 3-5 with double strike that costs 2 white, blue, black that has whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. And pay 6, create 2, 2, 2 white Astartes Warrior Creature Tokens with Vigilance. So this commander can provide you an absurd amount of card advantage throughout the game simply by consistently making tokens and there are plenty ways to do that. When it comes to builds for this commander, you might see builds that are more focused on creature tokens, treasure tokens, clue tokens, or all the above. Up next at number 8, we've got yet another Warhammer 40k commander with Bellacor the Dark Master with 329 decks to its name over the past week. A 6-5 Demon Noble with flying that costs 3 blue, black, red it has. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life for X the number of demons you control. And whenever another demon enters the battlefield on your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So Bellacor can draw you a ton of cards at the cost of life, and it also can ping down your opponents with a War Storm Surge type effect. And you might have already guessed the theme for this commander, but typically you're going to see it being built as a demon tribal commander. Moving on over the past week with 329 decks to her name, we've got Atraxa Praetor's Voice at number 7. Atraxa is a 4 4 with Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink that costs green, white, blue, black. She has at the beginning of your end step proliferate, so again, choose any number of permanent center players and give each another counter of each kind already there. Atraxa is one of the most popular commanders of all time, and it can be built in a wide variety of ways. Some of those themes include Super Friends, Plus Plus One Counters, Infect, Phyrexian Tribal, Sagas, and Energy. Next up though, at number 6, we've got Myram Sentinel Worm with 349 decks to its name over the past week. Myram is a 6-6 Dragon Spirit with Flying and Ward 2 that costs 3 gray and blue red. It has whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of it except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. So this commander can double up on every single one of your dragons, including your legendary dragons you normally wouldn't be able to clone. And as for a theme, well you've probably already guessed it, Dragon Tribal. But up next at number 5, we've got Gyerson Star and Kellermorph with 368 dax to its name over the past week. It's a 3-2 Tyranid Human with Ward 2 that costs 1 blue red that says, whenever another source you control deals exactly 1 damage to a permanent or player, Gyerson Star and Kellermorph deals 2 damage to that permanent or player. So this commander can add a lot of extra damage throughout the game on top of your ping effects. So when it comes to themes built around this commander, you might see Tims, also known as Pingers, or Burn, or Spellslinger.
Moving on at number four with 369 decks to its name over the past week, we've got the Ur Dragon. The Ur Dragon is a 10-10 dragon avatar that costs four white, blue, black, red, green, and it has eminence as long as your dragon is in the command zone or on the battlefield. Other dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. On top of that, it has flying, and whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So this commander is a massive threat that can help you get out a lot of dragons very quickly, and also can cheat them into play too. So yes, when it comes to a theme for this commander, typically you're going to be seeing Dragon Tribal. Moving on, at number 3, we've got Jota the Unifier coming in at 374 decks over the past week. Jota is a 5-5 human wizard that costs Wooburg, and it has legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X for X the number of legendary creatures you control. And whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards in the top of your library until you exile a legendary nominal card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, but the rest of the bomb your library in a random order. So Jota can pump your legendary creatures and give you a lot of free value throughout the game. And typically with this commander, you're going to be seeing legendary tribal or super friends builds. Moving on though to number two, we've got Will Helt the Rock Cleaver at 376 decks to its name over the past week. Will Helt is a 3-3 zombie warrior that costs two blue black that says whenever another zombie you control dies if it didn't have decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with decayed. And at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. So Will Helt essentially replaces your zombies when they die and it can give you card advantage as well. And when it comes to a theme, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to be seeing this commander being built in Zombie Tribal. And finally, the number one commander over the past week, we've got Lathro Blade of the Elves at 386 decks to her name. A 2-3 Elf Noble with Menace that costs two black and a green, and it says, Whenever Lathro Blade of the Elves deals combination to a player, create that many 1-1 green Elf Warrior creature tokens. And by tapping and tapping 10 untapped elves you control, each opponent loses 10 life and you gain 10 life. So by making this commander hit harder, you can get more creatures into play, and those creatures can help you drain your opponents. And as for a theme, well, Elf Ball or Elf Tribal is typically what you're going to be seeing. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player Affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.